Hello, lovelies. Welcome to Lessons from the Universe with Jennifer Hall. I look forward to sharing my channeled message with you today. And if you love it, please like, share, review, and subscribe. So today I was thinking about alchemy. I don't know if everybody knows what alchemy is. Um, it's a word thrown around a lot in the spiritual community, but it actually goes way back to like metal workers back in the day. They would create, you know, metal alloids or whatever it's called for weapons and other things. And they would do this by purifying the metal and adding new metal to it. It was this continual process, very much like awakening, right? They would heat up the metal and all the impurities, all the grossness would come up to the top. And they'd scrape that off and they'd add in a little bit of more, a little bit of new and more shit would rise to the top and they'd scrape that off. And it was this process until they had something pure. I would argue it's exactly what awakening is like. This happens to us throughout the process, right? We figure out something we want to let go of, a, a part of our thinking that we want to change or a part of our environment that we want to change. And we do this to very much purify ourselves and throughout the process we have to replace what we remove otherwise we become this void this black hole that sucks in more shit right so again it is this process as if I clean it up I add in more good more new more learning and then I have to clean up the new stuff that comes up it totally cannot come up all at once that would be too devastating right so there are layers and plateaus and moments of rest and assimilation and then there is more another wave and if we face it with bravery and compassion for ourselves and truly with gratitude for awareness of the next layer it becomes easier and easier and we begin to flow with it and before we know it it's not such a challenge anymore, right? No more storms. Now, of course, there are the things that we need to do that we've talked about before, right? We have to clean up our thinking. We have to deal with the chattering monkeys. We have to globe some of our old memories and we have to willingly change our environment and the people that we're around sometimes. But there is also this cellular memory, this storage in our body that we have to transform as well. Did you know, some of you may know, that the cells of our body have a maximum life of seven years. So in a very real way, starting this very instant, and then this one, and then this one, and then this one, you are programming the cells that will be the new you right? And eventually, sort of like the hundredth monkey, there is a tipping point where there is more new than old. So very truly, you can make a promise to yourself starting right now that you will start to program your new cells with only the highest and best thinking and even foods and whatever else, right? You know, if you're all in. <laughs> I became aware of this years ago when I was going through the darkness of my own awakening, right? The, the hardest, stormiest parts, which for me was coupled by some health issues as well. Um, those of you who listen to The Little Brunette, uh, you've heard part of this story at least, or maybe it's in the health episode, but irrelevant. I read or heard or was told or whatever about this short, relatively short lifespan for the cells of my body. And I became very, very committed to the formation of every new cell that if I could and continue to reboot myself with every new cell I create, if I can impregnate each tiny cell of my body with new awareness and good thoughts and healthy things, that in seven years or less, I would be an entirely new person. So not only did I take responsibility for my thoughts and my environment, not only did I start chopping people off when they presented things that were horrific or stressful or just, you know, sometimes just stupid. Um, <laughs> you know, sometimes we have to be patient with the stupid, like, let's be clear. But I decided that I was going to rid my body of excess cells. I was going to help it, right? So I would, well, I got those scrubby gloves you can get <laughs> at like Target, okay? Um, 
Ladies, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. Near the makeup, there's all kinds of bath stuff and brushes and stuff. Dudes, they're stretchy. They'll fit you too. But if you will scrub your body, right, not, not so much that you hurt yourself or destroy the lipid layer or, you know, whatever, but enough that you're exfoliating your body thoroughly on a regular basis, you do help speed up this cellular turnover. And that is useful, okay? Quite frankly, if I were to go through the storm that I went through um, back in the day, knowing what I know and living the lifestyle I live now, I would probably shave my head and like every hair on my body and, you know, just go for it. Be like, screw it, all this dead old memories and cells and bullshit, okay? Now, I don't recommend that. You know, you probably have a job where they're going to frown at you for that. Maybe, maybe not, okay? I'm not (laughs) advocating drastic measures, but I am advocating that if you will take responsibility for every new cell starting this moment, you will speed up this process infinitely. So not only is it the cells and of course the skin and all of that, but your lymphatic system plays a very important role in all of this as well. For those of you who do not know, the lymphatic system runs all through your body, up the insides of your thighs and around everywhere, down your arms, up through your neck, all over your body. And it is essentially a filter without a pump. It's as if you never change the filter on your air conditioner or your car. It just fills up and it really has no way of cleaning or purifying itself. Now, if we're very active, that helps the rigorous movement and all of that. But overall, our sedentary lifestyle does not help that. And so this lymphatic system, like it or not, becomes full with every medication that you ever took, Anytime you were ever too drunk or maybe did too many drugs and also memories and emotions. Shocking how many memories and emotions are tied into this system of your body that is seemingly just physical. So if you really want to go for it, (laughs) right, and get all in, not only are you looking at your thinking and your decisions and, you know, maybe quite frankly, exfoliation, um, you're also looking at activating the lymphatic system itself so that that filter can be purged more quickly. Now, there are a lot of choices here to do this. For me, As I mentioned before, at that point in my life, I was like, hey, I just threw caution to the wind and I did all of these things at once. Depending on your circumstances, maybe you wanna do what I did. Maybe you wanna pick one thing. So the maybe easiest, cheapest thing to do is actually get a rebounder. That's one of these little tiny trampolines you can get at Target or Walmart or wherever. They're like 20 bucks, okay? Your goal is to jump on that thing just one minute a day. Seems silly, maybe, but a minute's harder than you think (laughs) until you get used to it. It literally shakes up that lymphatic system and gets it moving. And sort of a happy side note on that is it does jiggle all your fat cells and helps to oxygenate them and helps them go too. So when you're jumping and you're jiggling, say yay, right? (laughs) Because there are multiple good reasons to want to jiggle your body, you know, for a limited amount of time each day. So that is something to do anybody, any budget, quite frankly. And yeah, you could jump rope. I mean, there's there's other choices, okay? People always ask me, well, can I do whatever instead? Yeah, do whatever you want, but you need to get that system moving and grooving. Now there's another, probably the most relaxing option to help speed up this process is something called a lymphatic drainage massage. Now, a lot of people don't even know that this exists happens to be one of the most relaxing massages. Um, You know, well, maybe unless your lymphatic system's super blocked up. I remember going in for my first one and there were all these, I'm not even clear how I didn't notice it before, but I had all these knots up basically the inside of my shins where my lymphatic system was just full, just clogged. And even after the very first session, you could feel the difference there. And not only did the lymphatic massages bring up memories and emotions for me, definitely purified my body. 
you know, when they tell you drink a lot of water, they mean it because the feeling that you will get afterwards is sometimes almost like a hangover, right? Like, because you're bringing whatever those chemicals are in your body, whether it's from surgery or drugs or alcohol or just toxic emotions. And often during a lymphatic massage, emotions will come to the surface. You might feel sorrow or even anger, or maybe it'll be afterwards when you start crying at some random television commercial or something irrelevant. You want to allow these things to come to the surface and at the very least, just feel them. Feel them and be purified. It's also really important you know, to not just feel them if you can help it. You know, if you're in a place where you can really think about, and half of you could probably say this out loud with me, what do I learn? How do I grow? Right? We definitely want to think about what is useful. We've stored whatever this emotion, whatever this memory is, we've stored it for so long because we hadn't learned from it yet. And the universe wanted to make sure that we didn't lose the opportunity to learn so that we could choose and become new and leave the past behind where we really legitimately can reprogram not just our thoughts and our brains, not just alter our identity, but truly from the inside out, reprogram the very cells of our body. So yeah, the trampoline's great and lymphatic massage is great. I went one further and I also added acupuncture to the mix. And I'll tell you, acupuncture is an interesting experience. It is a combination of occasionally painful, um, sometimes emotional, but it is truly a deeply energetic experience. If you allow yourself to get past the very physical, there are needles in my body sort of mentality, you can feel the energy pulsing through those meridians from where one needle is to the next and you can identify how it is dissolving and releasing and healing and letting go. I, you know, sort of side note, advocate for (laughs) acupuncture. I totally give acupuncture credit for healing my hormonal system. Um, You know, those of you who are my age and older, I had the Norplant Uh, birth control implant that was then later recalled and it completely jacked up my system very similar to what uh, IUDs some IUDs are doing to women now Uh, shout out to my clients who are going through that Um, and the acupuncture truly did reset my body in that hormonal aspect And it cleared out my lymphatic system. And then, you know, a year or so after that period of time, I was actually in a car accident and it healed my injuries from that as well. So shout out to Ping Ping. Um, She's wonderful. So anyway, this is a combination you can use or you can pick the one you are most comfortable with. It all really depends on how much work you have to do and, you know, how quickly you want to get through all the layers of bullshit. All too often, people forget that alchemy involves the entire body. It is purification, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and quite literally, physically. And so there are physical layers to this that ultimately lead to glowing health. But some people through the process get caught up in the symptoms and that's never good, (laughs) okay? When your body starts to present symptoms to you, it's giving you a message. It's giving you a message of which part of your life to pay attention to, right? The female organs and the male organs all relate back to our thoughts about our intimate relationships. Um, You know, different parts of the body, the joints and things all have to do with our rigidity in life, how much control we seek and how afraid or not we are of changing directions or not having control of what direction we go in. Each part of the body sends a different message. And then we go into the regular, (laughs) particularly, um, you know, Western uh, doctor environments And while I totally believe doctors exist for a reason and we should utilize them, it is often in that 
little tiny microcosm of our health reality that we are taught that whatever we're going through is permanent. I'm going to argue nothing's permanent unless like you lose your whole fucking arm. Okay. I had lupus. They told me lupus doesn't go away. I no longer have lupus. I had adult onset asthma so horribly that I wore an inhaler on a bracelet. I haven't needed one in well over a decade. I have no issues with my breathing whatsoever. You know, there are other things that have happened in my life. They told me I would never recover from, right? After my neck injury, they told me that I would never be able to really stand up straight, sit up straight, or be pain-free again. I am all of those things. So we can transform our bodies. And it is through a process of literally embracing cellular renewal and the fact that the body is designed to rebuild and sort of upgrade itself, right? And also, quite frankly, visualization. I would, usually going to bed at night, visualize my healthy body. I would visualize it as if it was laying on top of me, like floating just above me. And I would flesh out in my imagination what that looked like and felt like. And then I would watch it sink down into my human body and watch my body alter itself to that shape. And yeah, it sounds like imagination. Well, let's be clear. Imagination is the highest form of prayer. And you get yourself there and you say, this the equivalent or something better and you can absolutely without fail transform both your life and your physical body and your health experience in the world so the word is alchemy purity purification it is a continual process throughout awakening throughout our entire human existence there is no ending until we're done in this place on this earth we come here to face challenges head on to learn from them but also to really deeply recognize that we are the creators of our experience that manifestation is real and the place that we have quite frankly, literally, totally, the most control over that is our own physical body. Because this thing is nothing but a pushing out into the world of our spirit. I mean, yes, there's science, right? Cells divide and, you know, everything that's in our parents and all of that, right? That exists. We can also alter it. Okay? There's the real opportunity to create what we believe in. And if you can't get past whatever it is, I challenge you to look deeply at your core beliefs. Who impregnated you with this belief, right? Sometimes it's totally, completely made up, right? My mother used to tell me I was built like her. I looked in the mirror and I saw her body. It wasn't real. I didn't even realize it till I was big and pregnant with my twins and looking at old pictures. I didn't even recognize myself. And I realized the body that I had been seeing in the mirror in photos was not aligned with my reality. And that the more I aligned with reality, the more I could become that image that was real for me. And of course, you know, I went through a process of asking people what my body type was and became quite shocked that all along I had been wrong. But even in the wrong, because of my faith, it had made my body develop differently, right? I had this very strong belief that I was bottom heavy and thigh heavy and I was part of it was truly this sort of psychosis of belief I was taught that this is what I was but part of it was I believed that's where every piece of pizza went and so if I ate too much pizza no shit I woke up and that's where it sat when I realized that's not true my body doesn't process that way that's not who I am that 
began to change because it was so aligned with my beliefs. And through learning that and the true acceptance that we can visualize our health and make it true, I realized we can also visualize our physical body and make it true. And so I eat like my gigantic six foot five humongous husband. I am less than five four and I am slender. Now, the thing I'm working on is being able to um, (laughs) manifest muscle tone without the activities that it takes to do that. Um, I'm getting there. (laughs) We all have projects, right? No, I joke, okay? Um, But it's important to laugh. We have to laugh. We have to laugh at our jiggle and we have to laugh at ourselves when we get caught up in the negativity or the old or the the weird body dysmorphia or health dysmorphia or, oh my God, you guys, spiritual dysmorphia. I talk to so many people who do not know who they are, despite the fact that the universe is showing them their clairvoyance or whatever, right? They're in denial. They think, oh, it can't be me. Why not you? Right? I so believe that 99% of you, of us, is undervaluing and underestimating themselves. There's the occasional 1% that way overvalues and overinflates themselves. But you guys know as well as I do, that's a reflection of an insecure inside. And so that's bullshit too. And so alchemy. Maybe listening to me talk today, something's risen up to the surface for you that has little or nothing to do with what I'm actually saying. It's that one more gross yuck thing. Ew, that's true about me. Gross, (laughs) right? And we don't want it to be true. But when we recognize it, we say, oh, thank you. Thank you, universe. Thank you, higher self, for bringing this to my attention. I let it go and I'm free. I'm free of denying my spiritual gifts. I'm free of thinking that someone else's beauty makes me less beautiful. I'm free of thinking that someone else's success makes me inferior. My lovelies, nobody's perfect. Everybody struggles with something. Don't ever sit in front of some CIO or school principal or police officer or or anybody else. I mean, give people respect. Give all people respect. But don't ever sit in the presence of someone and feel that it makes you less. Never makes you less. Let that grossness rise up to the surface and scrape it off the top and enjoy the alchemy process as it helps you mature and grow and to become more stronger and better and recognize that to deny who you are is to deny the all-powerful universe and its ability to push out into this world as you If you put your hand through pantyhose, you have hand-shaped pantyhose. You are U-shaped universe. And the possibilities are endless. And so we purify our thoughts, our emotions, and our physical bodies. Take advantage of that seven-year lifespan. Reprogram those cells. Clear out that lymphatic system. Set yourself free from the places within us that store the bullshit so that you walk out the other side full of light and awareness. Until next time, beloved. Namaste. Thank each and every one of you for joining me today for this episode of Lessons from the Universe with Jennifer Hall. I appreciate each and every one of you for taking time out of your day to spend with me. If you haven't already found me on Facebook and Instagram, uh, 
come and find me there and join the conversation. My Facebook family is growing and we want you there with us. If you are inspired by the podcast, please consider clicking the green patron button. Not only will your support help keep us going and growing, but also coming very soon, there will be some patron-only content saved just for those of you that choose to help keep us on the air. If you haven't received word, maybe you haven't been following on social media, I am also offering some educational sessions for people inspired by the podcast that would like to learn and know more. You can find detailed information about that in the About section on my Facebook page. I want to send you each light and love, clarity and wisdom. I know always that whether you realize it or not, there's a little brunette with a podcast who's got your back. Until next time, beloved. Namaste.